So if you're looking at the effective interest rate, let's make sure we uh, effective interest rate on these um, simple discount and bank discount notes. Let's look at what a bank discount and an undiscounted note are first. Okay, so let's make sure we understand that. So I'm going to take a simple scenario where we uh, we're going to borrow a hundred dollars. So I'm going to borrow from the bank. I need to borrow a hundred bucks from the bank, and the rate that they have is uh, ten percent, and at their time it's going to be for a year. So it's it's easy numbers to work with. So let's see if I do that. So if you're going to do a bank discount. You take that simple interest, I equals PRT. The interest would be the principal of 100 bucks times the rate, 0.1, right? And then times the time of one year. So the interest here would be 100 times 0.1 times 1, which is 10. So your interest is 10 bucks. So here's what they do. You say, I need to borrow 100 bucks. Well, they take the $100. They take away the $10 interest and pay themselves first. And what you walk out of the bank with is 90 bucks. So this is what you you walk out of the bank with, but you still owe a hundred dollars to them. So effectively, what they did was they they gave you a hundred dollar bill and they say, oh, you owe us ten dollars. So you, they get their ten bucks first for interest, and then you eventually have a, you have a year to pay that hundred dollars off. Undiscounted note. It doesn't do that. And this is what most people think of when they think of loans with simple interest. All right, so let's do that again. Same scenario. 100 bucks at 10% times one year is $10. Most people think of this. You take your 100 bucks plus $10. This is, this is what you owe. You owe $110. So you walk out of the bank with 100 bucks. That's in your pocket, and then you're going to owe at the end of the year $110. That's when the bank gets their money back. So, to think of what the effective interest rate is, let's think a second about that I equals PRT formula. I'm going to solve this formula for rate. So, it's we're multiplying here. So, to solve for rate, you divide to undo the multiplication here, and you divide by the multiplication here. People, I don't know if you've seen that, but done before. So to solve for R, you divide by P times T. So the rate is equal to interest over principal times time. That's how you can solve for rate. This is how you find your rate. And all I do is take the simple interest and solve for R. So let's take that scenario again. Your rate is supposed to be your interest, 10 bucks, over the principal, which was $100, times time, which is 1. But wait a second. Do you remember what you walked out of the bank with? Over here in the bank discount method, you didn't walk out with $100. You actually walked out with 90 bucks. In this other scenario, you walked out with 100 So in a sense, you only get to use 90 bucks here for a year, and you pay $10 interest. You get to use 100 bucks for a year and still pay the same $10 interest. See, the interest doesn't change. The bank still gets 10 bucks. But in the in a, but the thing is, you only get to use ninety dollars here, and you get to use hundred dollars in the other scenario. So this interest rate is not ten percent because you didn't get to use the hundred dollars the whole time. You only got to use ninety dollars. This is not a hundred here; it's ninety because you didn't get to use the hundred dollars. You only got to use the ninety dollars. So your rate here is actually ten divided by ninety times one which would be 10 over 90. And if you put in your calculator, it's 0.11 repeating. So the effective interest rate is 11% because you didn't get to use the whole amount here. So there's a, there is a, an example here. It says that a man has a simple discounted note for $6,500. So he's going to take the $6,500 and it says simple discount note. And that's what this is all about, where you, you don't walk out with $6,500 from the bank. So at an ordinary bank discount rate of 8.84, these numbers aren't as easy to work with, and it's for 50 days. 
we're still going to use that I equals PRT. What we need to figure out is what do we get to walk out of the bank with? So let's figure out what the interest is. So principal is $6,500. Your rate is 0 0.0884. Your time is 50. And it says on the question, let me pull down this. Uh, use banker's rule. Banker's rule says you use 360 as your denominator. All right. So if I multiply that all up, we should get uh, $30.38. I'm sorry, that's not right. Let me actually type that in. Okay, so 6,500 times 0 0.088 four times fifty oops over three sixty seventy nine dollars and eighty one cents that's what the bank wants that's how much you owe the bank if you're going to do this so they're not going to give you the full sixty five hundred dollars they're going to take the sixty five hundred dollars take away the interest Sixty-four twenty point one nine. That's how much you walk out of the bank with. All right. So the interest here is how much it cost. Remember a second ago, we said that the rate is equal to interest over P principal times time. That was our rate formula. So was our effective interest rate? Well, the interest here was $79.81. The principal, you don't use $6,500. You use $6,420. That's how much you get to walk out of the bank with. Okay, so we're going to take $6,420.19. And the time was 50 out of 360. If I put $6,500 in here, then it comes back to this rate. The thing is, I don't get to use $6,500 for that whole time, so the rate is not this. It's actually higher. So, let's see if we can put this in. It's a fraction. So, let's see, 7, 9, dot 8, 1. And then that's 6420.19 times 50 over 360. The effective interest rate is actually 0 0.089503. Let's see where it wants me to round. Round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So I'm going to convert this to a percentage. Tenth of a percent. Nine. Nine percent. So. That's how you do the effective rate. It wasn't actually 8.84, it was actually 9%. That is your effective interest rate in this scenario.